All right, we're we're live. We're recording on every end, I think. I hope. Uh, I got a special guest today. Uh, we're going to get into some fun stuff that, that I've wanted to get into for a little while. The timing is actually perfect for this. Um, I had to get one of my buddies on that's not only an outdoorsman, a hunter, all the things that we love on this show, a Pro 2A guy. He's also a security specialist, home security specialist, and he's got... There's a lot of people out there going crazy, you know, but first I want to thank the sponsors. I want to thank everyone at www.johnbartoloshow.com. Head over to johnbartoloshow.com. Check out the sponsor list. Uh, we got a special sponsor this week. I want to thank uh, Scott Volkortsen and Volkortsen Firearms. If you haven't checked out Scott's stuff, he's got some beautiful pieces. Uh, he's got a whole line of uh, awesome stuff to, to go check out. So check out Volkortsen Firearms. The links will be down below. Uh, I got a really cool guest on today we're going to get into so many different cool topics that i'm excited about and uh you know i had to have two cups of coffee for this one and a half a monster so far we got the one and only alan Bolin. what's going on brother hey good, good morning, morning john. john good, good to, to see you man. man it's good to see you and uh you got some beautiful backdrop there so i'm excited uh you know this is a crazy time let's you know first get into your story and what you do and everything that encompasses it and and so everybody has a little bit of an understanding of your background as we kind of dive into into some of this stuff sure, sure. Yeah. yeah so, so you, know, you know when you, you say, say what you do that's that's it's kind of a, i guess a complicated thing, thing. I, I, I you know, know where where, where my my passion for for the outdoors and hunting where that starts and ends and where my passion for my job starts and ends, it's a really blurry line. Uh, they blend together really well. I'm a super passionate guy. I live life with absolute, uh, you know, I can go after everything 100%. And so I'm at work and I'm, I'm killing it at work. A lot of times I'm thinking about hunting. I'm thinking about bow hunting. It's like my drive. It, it just it fuels my fire continually. Sometimes when I'm at work, I actually, like, I see it as an extension of my hobbies and my passions because I know that they're both so important and they feed off of each other. Um, so I think I think when you're asking that, I think you're talking about work, like how I got started in this business and how you know home security became a part of my life. Um, so it started, you know, when I was in college, a lot of guys were getting recruited to go sell door to door home security, and you know this was you know 24 years ago. Um, I got recruited, and at the time. Uh, my, 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 I was, ex my, I was married, we were expecting a child and I had all these risks and, and I went home and I, I chickened out, I didn't do it, it was a full commission job, I chickened out and I went home and I worked for my dad. Well, halfway through the summer, me and the old man got in a fight and, uh, well, you know, not a fight, but a big argument and, uh, he fires me. So I say, you know what, I'm going to go out and do this uh, on my own. I called up my buddies that were, had gone and sold home security. And, and, and I, I went, went for it, and it was a life-changing life thing for me. Like, like, I was really, really good at it on the sales side. Um, I, like, I passed up everybody in that company, became, became the top rep, rep. and then and I, just got, got, I just got involved in the business. I, I started a company, one that I sold in 2005, and then I, I started an AMP in 2007. So that's, you know, a little bit of the, the very beginning. And what does AMP do? Give the readers, so, give the listeners a little bit of a background. Yeah, yeah, so we're a smart, smart home company. company. Um, security has changed a lot. You know, security used to be it used to be a, a, a BP device on the wall that would drive you crazy, and there was only a certain percentage of the population out there that lived in enough fear to go through the hassle and expense of dealing with it. So I'll give you a, a, an anecdote. So. When I first, the first day I interviewed for the job back in 1998, my manager told me that today, 22% of Americans have security, and we believe that it's going to be a curve similar to cell phones. When cell phones hit you know, in the high 20s, it jumped from the high 20s to 98% overnight because it reached this critical mass, and we're about to hit that curve. And, and so, so I got, got pretty excited, excited about it. I mean, that, that sounds, sounds good. good. Why, Why not be involved in an industry, industry that has a growth curve like that? Right. Well, guess what, John? 23 years later, we're at like 24%. It didn't do that. And I have theories on that, and that's because the, 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 there really is only about 25% of the population that cares enough about 
home safety to go through the hassle of entering that code and, and have the alarm and the beeping and all these different things. But what's happened in the last couple of years has been a major transformation of the industry as the smart home and the connected home has come into play. Security is totally different. In the last two years, it's dramatically changed, and we really are now experiencing exponential growth. It's totally changed to where it's not this BB device on the wall that complicates your life. It's an entire connected smart home that makes your life easier. So not only, you know, the security now is just a byproduct of an easier, more connected life. And I can get into what all that means, but that's that's where we are today. As opposed to security, Alan, isn't it more now with the devices that are out there, it's more, uh, I like to use the term surveillance. You know, it's more of surveilling. People like to know who's at the door. People like to know who's, you know, in their hallway or whatever. It's, uh, you know, I try to kind of course correct people. I'm like, look, and correct me if I'm wrong. You know, I'm never, never, I don't want to say never. I'm not right all the time. But, uh, you know, I tell people this all the time when they ask me because they think I know something about this stuff, which I don't. I'm like, you know, they're like, what do I need for home security? I'm like, go to the store. I'm like, get a nice setup, whether you want to get a, a, a ring set up, a Lorax, wh- whatever I suggest. But I tell people this, this, thing, this thing all the time. I say, they go, isn't that connect with the Wi-Fi and isn't there risk and all this stuff? And I'm like, yeah. But I'm like, unless you're an accountant for the mob, do you really need to go out and have like this crazy system? I go, essentially, it's just a surveillance system at the end of the day it's something you're going to be able to see you know who's at your door who dropped off packages offer you some protection and at the same time like you're saying it's evolved to where it's accessible now you can buy them in home depot you can buy them pretty much anywhere i have three of the i believe they're ring cameras i don't know what they are they're yeah i think that's what they are we gotta Uh, fix that we gotta gotta fix that yeah i I think i have like three of those around the house but you know for the most part i've had lorax systems i've had a bunch of them but i look at it like this if somebody wants to like trip in and cut the wi-fi and cut you know what i mean It, it you know how do you compartmentalize this you know to where people understand what it is that you're buying exactly yeah so cameras video is definitely a piece it's one of about five pieces so today we have perimeter protection which are like your magnetic contacts and your doors and windows potentially motion sensors i'm not a huge fan of motion sensors but magnetic contacts doors windows glass break contacts that's your perimeter protection then your outdoor protection is your doorbell camera on the front door and your your outdoor cameras in your back and side yards and and then you get into the convenience factors, which is lights, locks, thermostats. Mm. And all of this comes together in one app, at least with us. We use Alarm.com, which is the most comprehensive backend for security and smart home in the world. And so and we're integrated fully with them through we have our AMP Smart app. So imagine this. I'll give you a couple scenarios how it works. So you go to bed at night and you click on your scene on your cell phone. Or even say, you know, Alexa, I'm I'm going to sleep. And that immediately adjusts your thermostat to your preferred nighttime temperature, turns off all your lights, locks every door in your house, puts the cameras in a mode where they're, uh, you know, whatever mode you want for nighttime, arms your security system. All All of that happens automatically by you telling Alexa you're going to sleep. When you wake up in the morning, the same thing happens. Your alarm can disarm. Your thermostat will adjust. Your cameras change mode. All of these things happen automatically, and all of this is available in one application. And so another scenario, say you drive away from your home. You cross a geofence that you set up that's, say, a mile or two away from your house, and your thermostat automatically adjusts to save you money while you're gone. At the same time, you get an alert on your phone because you cross this this fence saying, you left your garage door open. Would you like to shut it? And you just, from the notification, say yes. Would you like to arm your security system? You, from the notification, say yes. So these kind of things come together to just make life easier. And at the same time, you live in, obviously, a lot more safety knowing that your home's protected and you have cameras running, all of that. And it comes together and they work together through one application, one, app, one backend. Now... You brought up some of the numbers, which there's, there's you know, quite a bit for the, for the lay person to, to sort through there. Now, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong again, 
that the rise of, I guess you'd call home surveillance equipment, right, as opposed to security, because I, you know, I think there's a difference, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Some of the the surveillance type stuff is more um, accessible, and it's come more to the mainstream market. I can remember as a kid, like, where would you go buy that stuff, right? Like at 15, 16, 17 years old, like you went to like Radio Shack and you got like a ham radio and maybe you had a couple of uh, what they call closed circuit television recorders. Now, it's become so much more accessible now. And I remember even 10 years ago buying a complex Lorax system and it was expensive. It wasn't as inexpensive as it is now. Uh, now you can get a pretty good setup uh, around your house. And again, I'm a lay person, so you can get something decent that gets you rolling for a few hundred bucks. Um, what, you know, do you attribute the growth, not just to smartphones, removing you know, the growth of smartphones, but do you attribute it to the accessibility as well of just having this stuff you know, kind of go mainstream and people becoming maybe a little more paranoid too? Yeah, I think that the products have become a lot easier to work with, and they've become more um, applicable to everyday life. You know, the old camera systems, they, all of the information was stored on a DVR in your house. Today, it's all web-based. It's all stored on a server, and you can access those videos. Our videos, you can... Our standard package you can access for 30 days backwards. And do you really need to access something beyond 30 days? Maybe, but it would be pretty rare because typically you know that something happened within a month. And then you could go back and review footage. Right. And so the fact that you don't have to have servers in your house, and have to, it's complicated. How do you access those? How do you like go in and look at footage and, and sort it and all of that? You know, we have, we have technology now that on your outdoor cameras, can tell the difference between a human being, an animal, and a car. And so you can say, like, for example, your doorbell camera, only record when there's motion, for example, so they don't have tons and tons of footage, and only record when it's a human being or a car in my driveway. So I can exclude the road for cars, but allow cars in the driveway and allow any human being, and you know what, dogs don't record those at all. Mm. And so I get a, a lot more usable footage instead of having, you know, a month of 24 hours a day footage. What am I going to do with that? Mm. Now I'm getting notifications. A human being just walked up to your door and immediately I get a notification on my cell phone and I can see the clip and even talk live to the person as they stand at my door, no matter where I am. You know, that even blows my mind because it, it is like you can time just being able to time out some of my stuff. I'm even blown away by that. The technology has definitely grown leaps and bounds in terms of what I started with. And, you know, I hadn't really thought about it till, you know, you were coming on the show and I was like, damn, that field has experienced such growth in the IT side and the, the I, and IP side and just the, the way that it's kind of grown in, in terms of now you can have it on your cell phone, which I know people would laugh at me because that's been going on for a couple of years. But you know, you only replace these things every so many years and or when you move, you consider replacing them. And some people don't even have camera systems. Now, is it is it something when you're 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 talking to folks? I, I, I believe like you don't have to sell this. Is that like a crazy is that a crazy thought? You know, do you feel like you have to sell this? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a, a good, good question. question. Um, you know, so so, so my, my company, company does a lot of direct sales. sales. So, so we, we have, have we have college, college students out knocking on doors during the summer, mm -hmm. uh, pitching people on the product, and and so we we definitely do you know approach the market, um, and and the industry has gotten extremely competitive for market share. So you, you probably see click ads all over the place all the time. If you were to, yeah, if you were to search security, well, Google's going to harass you with security for the rest of your life after that. You're going to see ads on every page you go to. So it has gotten pretty aggressive. There's, you know, I like to say that I'm, you know, I'm in a market where I'm competing against the richest man in the world. I mean, Amazon is in our space, right? I'm, I'm competing with Jeff Bezos. That's, that's, I think that's a good market to be in. Captain Moneybags. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's, it's a compliment to our industry. Um, so, yeah, I would say that it is a highly competitive industry. Um, do you have to sell it? Well, I, I don't know about that because, you know, that, that need is built into somebody. You know, somebody's either going to feel that that's important or not. 
Um, um, so, so I don't know about selling it, but you definitely have to get in front of the customer and show them why your product is superior to other products. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think people, the big fear with people sometimes too is like Big Brother listening in and people being able to access their cameras and things like that. And, you know, I, I, I even have a touch of that inside of me and not, not, a, not a conspiracy theorist, but, you know, I, I'm like, if somebody wants to watch my front lawn, I'm quite all right with that. That's not a big deal. But it, at the end of the day, do you deal with a lot of people that have that, that fear built into them as well? Yeah, there are those out there who don't like interior cameras, and, and I'm, I'm totally fine with that. You know, um, we, we, I would say most of our cameras are doorbell cameras, and then the second biggest product would be an exterior, like backyard, side yard camera. Uh, interior cameras are the last, uh, the last selling product. Uh, but, you know, I mean, you've got Amazon and Google in your house at all times. The other day, I was talking to my wife about how to cook a pork tenderloin. And, and five minutes later, I walked by my Amazon view, and there was a re- recipe for a pork tenderloin on, the, on oh, yeah. the screen. I'm like, are you kidding me? This thing is listening to me. It, it, is, it was shocking to me. Um, our technology is, is very um, protected. Alarm.com has the best reputation uh, in the world for smart home and security for the back end, and that's who we use. Our, our cameras and two-way voice, our microphones, they're one way. So to activate two-way voice, the, 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 you can speak with an operator over the panel. So when there's a break-in, an operator comes on to see if you're okay, a live operator. But that connection can only be made by your panel dialing out. It is impossible for our operator to dial in without your panel initiating contact, as an example. You know, it's it's wild given the the, t- the time that we're in now, and I'm sure, you know, we've seen the trickle down, Alan, and, and part of the reason why I was so anxious to get you on this week, you know, I, I've been on the phone with FFL owners, I was on the phone with Neil Reddy Gunner, I was on the, you know, on had him on the show, I've had uh, uh, so many guests on just talking about the panic buying, and we've been talking about toilet paper, you know, to the nth degree. It's been trickling down. Like I'm starting to hear the guys in the body armor space. You know, they can't put body armor on the shelf fast enough, right? So walk me through for the, the, the totally lay person, you know, how you view home security, either from the inside out or the outside in, however you like to explain it. Yeah, that's a good question. And, you know, um, it, it, it is different to every person. Um, and, and I'll tell you how I view it. So... My, my wife grew up with a security system in her home, and they armed it every night. I didn't. And so when I got into the industry, you know, she said immediately, I want one of those. Mm. And she got in the habit, I mean, she was already in the habit of arming the system every single night. You know, and the funny thing is when, when she's out of town, there's probably times I forget to arm it. When she's in town, that th- I, I guarantee you, it's not even 99%. It is 100% of the time. It is never not armed at night. And I'll tell you, you know, I'm a, I'm a big Second Amendment guy. I've got, I mean, I've got guns at every entrance and a safe in my house. I mean, I, I'm, I'm big on this stuff. So that's, I consider, like, when I think of my primary line of defense, I think about, you know, you know my, my, my whatever, right. my, my weapon that I've been well trained on. But the, the, having something that wakes you up, having something that alerts you, to somebody's presence. There's not an entrance in my house that can be breached without a loud siren going off, without me being awake to to arm myself. And then also the police are on the way. The, the police will be contacted and they're on the way. So I, that that's big to me. I mean, I live in a safe area, but I sleep better because my wife has developed that habit of turning that security system every Yeah, you know, I believe in redund- redundancy too. So... You know, for me, like I said earlier, to me, and this is how I've, ex- I've explained it to people because people always say, you know, I need a gun. They st- everybody starts with security from the inside out. And I always say, you know, they're like, oh, but you have cameras too. And I say, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll have redundancies and put in place. Like you said, it's more to wake you up than anything. And I'll have, you know, two in the garage, two in the back. You know, I even have one on the side. But you know, I've looked into a doorbell one. I'd kind of, kind of would 
that's what I'm exploring right now, maybe going that route, but is it overkill because I can see who's coming to the door through the other cameras? Now, I explain to people all the time, at least internally, and I know how you and I think a small part, and this is going to sound crazy to listeners, but it's not that crazy to us. A small part of us always wishes a motherfucker would, right? Like, you're kind of like, oh, I'll leave it unarmed tonight. Let's just see what happens. And, uh, you know, the wife's not home, so maybe I'll get lucky and we'll get an intruder. You know, because you you almost like, you know, like you want to just have that wrong house mentality. And, you know... And that's going to sound crazy to a lot of people, but the, the reality is, you know, we, you, you spend so much time training. It's just, you know, it's kind of foolish, but it's in the back of our head sometimes like, oh, you know, you want to break you, you want to test yourself, yourself, I guess, <laughs> in, in a small way. Like, am I really ready? Now, coming back to the way I approach it, at least from the firearm standpoint, because people ask me all the time, you know, I want to get a firearm and that's how they view home security. I always say, well, you know, what I've noticed more often than not in most of the, of the women in my life, loved ones, they, when the doorbell rings or they hear a loud noise, they tend to freeze. And um, I would say, where do you feel the most comfortable? Where do you freeze? And I had one friend's wife say, you know, in the kitchen, I just, I don't even answer the door. I stay in the kitchen. And I'm like, okay, that might be the ideal place to stage a weapon or to stage something for self-defense. And they're like, geez, I never thought of that. Some women, you know, or, or folks say the bathroom, you know, I go in the bathroom and I wait. Well, if that's where you're going to go, that might be the ideal place to stage something. So a lot of the questions I get revolve around staging. And I had a very notable uh, UFC person, I won't name them, recently uh, purchase a gun. I walked them through a lot of different things. And they said, but I don't want to carry it. I just want to keep it. I said, that's fine. You know, home defense, you know, you're not a CCW person by all means. They say, but what can I carry? I say, Get some pepper spray, or I, I'm a big believer in, uh, you know, at the door, I always tell people, and this, this, this is going to show people a little bit of my mindset, you know, by the door, don't be afraid to have uh, uh, either some pepper spray or something that you can immediately disable the, the person's visual, you know, in some way, shape, or form if you had to, if you don't want to have a firearm there. At the end of the day, if you make a mistake with pepper spray, it's kind of one of those forgivable things. So I'm always coaching people through I guess you'd call it the staging process from the door in. And I'm no expert. The number one thing I always tell people is don't try and sweep your house. That's not going to go well. You're not, you know, a SWAT operator, you know, stay in your room. They have to come to you. There's not a lot of thieves out there that are looking to take a TV off a wall these days. It's too much work. They're going to try to come to your room because your room is going to have whatever's valuable. And that's going to, yeah. And that's going to be the approach. So, you know, I sleep very well armed, as most people would imagine. So I, I don't um, leave that to chance. Uh, you know, I, I could probably uh, uh, be okay for, for quite a while. But, you know, I try to just put people in that mindset of the doorbell rings or you hear that loud knock or the, like, as you said, the noise goes off that wakes you up, the trigger. You're going to have what we call like a startle flinch, a fear mechanism that's going to kick in. And it's important to me to always go over that with them. When that fear mechanism kicks in, how do you react when you have that adrenaline dump? Like, you, you know, for most people, it's like a loud bang at the door or the garage after a certain hour, right? Seven, eight, nine o'clock, an unexpected noise. I say, okay, if that's what's going to set you off or that's going to be the trigger, where do you see yourself? Do you see yourself freezing wherever you are? Well, where are you at that particular time? Are you in the kitchen? Are you in the living room? Are you in the garage? So I try to walk people through this scenario of how they'll react because most people aren't proactive people in terms of, you know, sprinting out of the bed, grabbing the guy or, or uh, uh, being, uh, uh, let me check the camera or let me go here. But most people have the, now bringing this point home, most people have their phone with them. And one of the beauties of security systems today is they have their phone. So I always say immediately, you know, if you check your camera, it's an unexpected guess. It's not what you want. They're uninvited. They're trying to break in. You know, the immediate answer is sound the alarm, right? You know, call 911. But do you feel you have to coach people through that type of inside out training or outside in training when you're when you're giving them uh, um, advice? Yeah, yeah, I think I think, I think that our, our sales, sales guys definitely, definitely go through scenarios with customers, customers for, for sure. sure. And uh, 
you know, you, you, you bring up, you know, somebody's, for example, hunkering down in the kitchen when, the, the, you know, let's say it's a lady home alone and there's a loud knock at the door. And she's like, I'm not answering. I'm, not, I'm staying right here. Well, in the case, having an extra tool would be a doorbell camera. Imagine immediately on her phone, a video comes up as a notification and she can see the person at the door. And at that time, she doesn't have to, she can actually converse with that person through a microphone. They can't see her. They have no idea where she is. She can say, hey, I'm at the store right now. Leave the package there or whatever it is. She can even, if it's a, let's say it's a neighbor needing something, she can say, I'm unlocking the door for you right now. And she can unlock the door from that same application. But the fear 99.9% of the time, that tool would make the fear go away because you would see what the person is up to and be able to speak with them. And then that 0.1% and you see a super shady or something weird going on in your doorstep, then you're in the kitchen and now you can take action. And wherever that firearm is, you can go to that place because you know it's now become necessary because there's somebody that shouldn't be on your doorstep, on your doorstep, messing with your door. Mm. You know, I try to walk people through percentages that are based on zero fact. Um, and, I, <laughs> and I say that because, uh, you know, because I want to see if you have any hard percentages because I'd be interested in hearing them. I t- like I said earlier, I brought up like the accountant for the mob scenario. You know, do you have to have a house built out like uh, I Am Legend or some of these homes you see, I mean, by and large, no, I tell people like, if you have cameras and you have multiple cameras and you have something that allows people to know you have cameras, uh, you know, that's going to kind of ward off a good chunk of wannabe criminals because they're not going to want to deal with cameras. They're not what we call like, you know, what we would refer to in law enforcement, like a sophisticated criminal. They're not someone that's going to go in and trip wires and, and things like that. You know, for the most part, cameras can sometimes be your best deterrent for that. And, you know, I always say, look at it as percentages. If you have cameras, you're probably going to ward off about 75% of the people that would probably consider, you know, coming into your home or... or If they can can see see them. them. If they can see them or it's clearly marked. Yeah. You know, the other 25 are going to be your essentially your career criminals, which tend to be the most dangerous and those trying to come into your home. And I tell people this all the time and it's kind of a harsh reality. And I'm no expert at this. Like for some reason, people think because you work in the gun industry, like you're an expert in home invasions. I'm not. Um, you know, I tell people all the time. If someone's coming in your your house forcefully, you have to assume immediately that they're coming in to rape and kill you. You have to assume that right off the bat. Uh, Chances are, if you're armed, by the time they realize you're armed, it's already too late and you're in the soup. So, you know, you have to look at it as a percentage thing. And So, John, on that percentage... percentage, Yeah, give me me some data. I think that... Yeah, and I... I don't have the exact numbers, but what we found is that criminals who will try to circumvent a security system are either very smart or very stupid. And that's the crowd you got to be most careful of are the very stupid ones. Mm-hmm. They're high, they're crackheads, they're, they don't care. They're just right. coming no matter what. They don't even know what to look for. And those are your most dangerous criminals. The ones in the middle that are after robberies and they're not very sophisticated, yeah, it's it's going to deter, deter those, but, but this, this is when it actually, when, when your firearm and your security system actually come into play, play is when somebody very stupid tries to break into your house and come in with bad intentions. Yeah, and you know, someday I would love to get. I mean, it's hard to pull that right to get percentage of around it, and you have to get a group of criminals together and do a sample. But I think for the most part, which you'll never get, but I think for the most part, uh, you know, you find and you read in some of these stories, and I've read them. You know, people say I avoided that house because it had a camera system and I just didn't want to deal with that. Uh, and, and that's pretty common. And I think as more and more camera systems come into play and more and more surveillance equipment comes into play, it, it'll ward off the, the, the home invasion, so to speak. I, I don't know if those numbers are down and I don't know if you have any data on it, but I'd imagine that they would be, Alan, given how many resources are out there now to, to have cameras. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. sure. I, I, I did, did see a stat several, uh, you, know, you know, three or four years ago that home invasions were up. up. I haven't I seen another stat, stat come out. I think it's a matter of when they started keeping track of that. It's kind of like sacks in the NFL. You know what I mean? We don't know yeah. how many, how, because, you know, when was that stat being kept, you know, and what it's kind of, that's one that's a little bit, you know, uh, an enigma caught in a riddle, like, 
if it's a domestic, was it a home invasion to begin with? You know, you see what I'm saying? It, it, it yeah. becomes a tough one. It's a baked in number. It's kind of like when people say, well, the amount of crimes with gun violence. Well, you know, half of them right off the bat are murder suicides, which, which most people don't understand. Um, those are people that were going to kill themselves anyway, whether they had a firearm or they drank Drano. It's, you know what I mean? So, so, you know, trying to explain that to people is always a hard, a hard thing. They're like, well, if they didn't have the gun, they wouldn't have killed themselves. Well, if they suffered from a high degree of mental illness, which most people did, if they're willing to hold a gun to their head and pull the trigger, uh, you know, they're probably going to find another way to do it. Uh, people used to jump in the tub with toasters. Uh, it's just, you know, it, at the end of the day, uh, people find a way life finds a way so you know trying to explain some of the baked in numbers in that and that's you know domestics are another one that raise an interesting uh interesting thing because a lot of men i've noticed are fighting back whether it's using recording devices or uh, uh surveillance devices in some way shape and form in terms of being able to be like you know, this didn't happen and I have this recording or I have this thing. Yeah. And, you know, I've noticed that, uh, uh, in so, in so many different cases when stuff comes out, but do you find that the reason people don't want cameras in the home is obviously rooted in, they don't want Google or Bezos or anybody listening, but do you ever advocate, Hey, this might save you in a confrontation or something that happens. Have you ever considered that angle? That is an interesting angle. I, I've never. It's 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 hard to go there with a the customer, right? Uh, but I, you know, I, I can imagine that. I mean, especially if you're dealing with uh, one of the spouses, and and that comes up as a concern. Uh, clearly, that that could be an angle. Yeah, because I'm a I, I'm okay. I'm very okay with something that's pointed at the door that kind of captures your back, in mm -hmm. you know out. I should say. So, like, a lot of people have these, uh, you know, uh, entranceways or foyers or whatever you want to call it. Uh, if you had something that at least recorded from your back in, you could capture a larger degree of whatever the altercation is or whatever the issue is. And then, you know, if you were really thinking it through, it, it may capture any, any volume or anything. But, like, a friend of mine just installed a really nice vault. I'll give you a, a good Mm. example of where this kind of thought process comes from he installed a really nice home safe and if you're in my business or Alan's, you'll understand what i'm saying and most people that listen to this podcast get it you know he put in a really cool system and he said geez you know I, uh, but i got young ones and i'm still nervous da 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 you know, and his kids are high school age. It's not like they're super young. He just doesn't want them doing anything stupid and they don't know the codes or have the keys to anything. So he said, I'm gonna put a camera that just put the vault or just so I can see if anyone's going there screwing around. And it made me think for a second. I was like, you'll do that in no, no dot process whatsoever. You'll do that in 30 seconds flat. But, you, you know, you, when I mentioned maybe putting one in the foyer or whatever, when he was putting his camera system in, he was like, no way. The, uh, the Jeff Bezos is listening to me. I'm like, okay, like whatever. But it's funny how when you flip the switch, certain situations, people are like so willing to do it, you know, and he's paranoid. Uh, you know, high school age girls and stuff. He's like, I want to put a cam now. He's like, I want to put a camera in the living room, but I don't want him listening in. But people can put cameras in that don't record the audio too. They, they could be available. Um, you know, the biggest login password. That's the biggest risk. I mean, that that they might know you. You might have given them your password at one point, or suddenly they have access to your cameras. For somebody randomly to randomly to hack these things, I mean, I don't know what the odds are, but it, right. like this is 128 bit encryption. Like this is really difficult to do. But if somebody you don't, I mean, you got to be careful. Yeah, it's you know, it, it's just where do you draw the line? Now, let's jump to to this 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 crisis right now that we're going through this COVID crisis. So the market blows up and everybody right now, as you know, is my phone has been nonstop. Everybody's clamoring, you know, to get their hands on anything they can get their hands on uh, around this crisis, whether it's firearms, whether it's ammunition, whether it's food, whether it's toilet paper. Have you seen a huge spike in people that want home security systems? We, we've definitely seen a rise in demand. 
Um, our, our manner of going to market where we knock on doors, we do that mainly during the summers. And a lot of our teams are just getting rolling with some, some pre-summer sales selling on Saturday and things like that just now. And demand has been extremely high. People are very receptive. Now, with the nature of the virus, though, that has pulled us back because uh, of the safety. We're expecting probably we have a, a start date for for May right now. We'll we'll see what happens. We can start in June whenever whenever it's safe again for us to be out in full force. We'll do it. we'll do it. But yes, yeah, has been a rise in rise in demand. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I go in Home Depot and you can't even buy anything. I can't even get a, a, a I, there's nothing. It's sold out, and. You know, I, I've seen a total trickle down over the last couple of weeks to where, like I said earlier, it's plate carriers, it's everything else. And I try to tell people because I've had like novice people reach out to me and they say, you know, John, uh, um, I want to get one of those plate carriers. And I, I look at them and I say, you know, look, I get it. OK, you want one of these. Maybe I, you know, you should get a soft vest have one or two for the kids but i try to explain to them i'm like if you've never trained in that equipment and you don't know that equipment and you're just a casual gun owner or a casual person that buys a home security system i'm like that's a whole nother tool and to explain to somebody that particular tool like i had a totally novice friend to security to guns to everything he was just a jujitsu guy and he's trying to get all his hands on all kinds of stuff now and i'm like look you know here's the deal you don't need all this crazy gear. Can you step into it in stages? Yes. But, you know, like you're saying, like a doorbell camera, maybe you just need a bell camera. Um, maybe you just need a soft vest or maybe some plates for the kids' backpacks. I can understand that. That's probably a good thing. But you don't need to go out and buy a, a $700 Cry Precision setup, right? You know, and when I explain that to them, they're like, it, it costs that much. Isn't it just like a metal plate? And I'm like, yeah, but you're getting into high grade equipment now and you're not going to buy junk. You know, no friend of mine is going to go out and buy, you know, a piece of junk. I'm like, do you want to just get a soft vest? So I try to explain security, personal security, outboard security in state people. People. And in that, I feel sometimes is the best way for them to, to grab onto it. You know, like I had a friend say to me, you know, I want to get into reloading and he's sending me pictures and I'm like, dude, I'm looking to buy like a $10,000 automated system that cranks out like, you know, commercial grade ammo and something that, you know, but I'm in a different wavelength and I forget that sometimes from some people. So I have to, we're all jaded, right? In the business. So you have to scale back and kind of get them on the path of like training wheels. It can be overwhelming. It's overwhelming. Yeah. So do you find so yourself scaling it, you know, to people? Overwhelming. If you try to do it all at once, it, yeah. Yeah. Because, absolutely. Yeah, because I, mean, I, I think it's the same, you know. Um, the, the, I, John, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You cut out for a second, but I can hear you. Okay. So go ahead. I got you too. You were saying? No, I was saying, you know, more often than not, do you, you know, people, it, it's coming back to even people, how people buy anything, right? It's like when we're putting together a package of skews for firearms industry i always say look people are going to buy more often than not in the middle you're going to show them the cadillac you're going to show them the pinto they're probably going to come somewhere in the middle and you know more often than not you have to let people kind of graduate into a system and that's why i think the home security business is doing so so well because a lot of it's system based you can start with just the camera you can graduate to something else into something else into something else um do you find yourself, you know, uh, people going either all in or do you find them graduating into it in pieces? Definitely they start small. I mean, it's expensive too, you know. If you, if you wanted a system that controls every light in your house and, and all, you know, multiple thermostats and, and cameras on every package just took that for you. Every 22% of break-ins happen for nothing. It's only 18% happen through right. years. So, on a starter system, if you can put sensors on, you know, perimeter sensors on your door, that have a door camera in the front yard, I mean, you're rolling. You're, you're from a, 
from a probability standpoint, you you covered 99% of what could happen. Because even if there was a window, what, you have a camera in the back and front yard that, that sees who's approaching. And, and you can have notifications. You know, your notification goes off in the middle of the night if somebody's walking in your backyard and that wakes you up. So... These things can these things can be definitely approached small in the beginning, and it is overwhelming too. If you get too much, you know, it's, who wants to spend their entire life dealing with a smart home? I mean, you want just a few things you're actually going to use, right. just like just like getting in gradually with, with firearms. You know, I've gotten several girl, you know, friends of mine that are females that started with a firearm. I, I personally, I, I have them get a thirty-eight special revolver. I feel like it's so simple that you can see, oh, the bullet's here, and it moves here, and this hammer comes back, and I like an exposed hammer, too, so they can see what's going on. Then they can understand. And there's a lot of mystery for some, for you and me. It's like, oh, yeah, this is so simple. But for somebody who's never touched a firearm before, I understand how an auto's working and the magazine and chambering around and all these different things. I don't know. I, I, I think there's simpler ways to start. I don't know what your opinion is on that. No, I, I mean, I, you know, I have a, it really depends on the proficiency of the person purchasing one and then two, what their budget is and three, what their home is like, you know, and none of those supersede the other in terms of, of, um, you know, so if you got a lot of little ones running around, it, it's hard to, to get into staging and things like that. You have to uh, always be respectful of the person's environment. So people say, I have an unlimited budget. I go, that's great. But you have three, four-year-olds, two, six-year-olds, and an eight-year-old running around. Now, explaining that to people, and then people say, well, my kids know not to go in this room and not to go in that room. But I'm not going to give you bad advice just because you say that, right? So you try to set that all up. Like you come in my house, you know, I'll always have a a staged weapon or two in the house because that's how I live. Um, but the reality is I don't have young ones. So I have the convenience of being able to do that. So to me, it starts with getting a lay of the land because everything is, is mission driven. Every, whatever the mission is, it doesn't matter. The mission can be going from here to the mall. It's all mission driven. If I wear sweatpants, my gun might be different than if I'm wearing jeans. So people who really dive into the minutia of firearms, concealed carry, things like that. Like, you know, Clint Smith was one of the people who, uh, of Thunder Ranch gave me a really good education on why he carries a spare mag. He doesn't carry a spare mag because he thinks he's going to get into a gunfight. He carries a spare mag in case he has a malfunction with his firearm and he has to change that out. And that's a really good mindset to have. So, you know, just in the nature of how I live, I have, I use Glocks. I, I prefer Glocks or, you know, some people prefer Smith & Wesson M&Ps because the interchangeability of the mags. It's so easy. If I leave four or five of them laying around, there's always one within an arm's reach somewhere if I have to swap something out. Now, my thoughts on people arming themselves, I always say to someone who's a total novice, male or female, doesn't matter. I always say, you know, picture it totally pitch black. How do you know your, your, where your firearm is? Like start in these types of, you know, almost scenarios or games in your head. And you do more often than not end up in a revolver because a revolver is the classic get off me gun. You can press it right up against somebody. If they attack you, you're not going to have to worry about a malfunction, the, gun, the firearm being out of battery, any of those things. So the next evolution is I'm always like, well, they'll, they'll like, you know, maybe a lot of the females will be like, oh, I really like a Kimber. I'm like, well, that's not really ideal. You got hammers, you got decockers, you got all these things, you got safeties. So I get into the 1911 conversation. I'm like, that's not going to make a lot of sense for you. I always say noisy is better. A nice noisy gun. A lot of people do lean towards the 38s. 38. So 38 will get the job done. I'm not a knockdown power guy. I don't believe in that. But I, you know, I always say something noisy, something that's going to wake the neighbor up, get you help right away. Don't don't afraid to to go a little up from a 38 special. Maybe look at a 357 or something that's going to, you know, really kind of kind of wake the dog up and and get some help along the way. You know, there's not, you know, people always the shotgun is the most overblown thing. People say shotgun and I'm like, yeah, because of the iconic sound of a shotgun, but it also gives your location away. People who don't chamber one, it tends to give your location away. There's nothing wrong with a revolver. A revolver is a great place to start for a nightstand gun because not a lot of people like to feel um, the the 
the angst that comes with a, a chambered striker fire pistol. You know, it takes people a long time to feel comfortable with something like that. And unless you've trained on it a lot and you understand holsters and getting out of the holster in some capacity, that can be a little bit of a pitfall. And most of the time, most people never train on getting access to their firearm when they're in bed or they're in a, you know what I mean? They're never trained on it. So, you know, you see very few people actually train accessing their firearm in bed. And it's something, you know, that I think is, is probably a rude awakening for a lot of people. So I have a lot of thoughts on what people stage by their bed. You know, if you, you know, some people say I want to do a thumbprint or I want to do a keypad or I want to buy this safe or I want to buy that safe. I'm like, well, you know, I talk people out of the key scenario because these motor skills tend to be the first to go. So I'm like, you know, you don't want to be fumbling around with keys, you know, something that's biometric, that's quick that you can get access to is, is fine. But at the same time, unless you practice getting it out of the drawer and up and out, you know, I believe I, I push people more often than not. If you're going to have a firearm in the house, let ever, you know, don't be afraid to let everyone know that lives in the house that you have one in the house. That's one, two, anchor it by the bedside. You know, get, you don't have to have this nightstand that you're not willing to anchor something, you know, anchor it right on top. So it's right there and you can get right to it. I had a friend who put one in a drawer and I remember going to his house and he showed it to me and I said, you're never going to get this out. First of all, the way to get his hand in and into the drawer was almost damn near fucking impossible because he didn't set it up right. And I said, this is fucking retarded. You know, like you're never going to be able to get this out. So, you know, for me, it's, it's a lot to explain to people and unpack and people make a lot of simple mistakes. And then they want to revert back to, well, I just want a shotgun. I'm like, a shotgun's great. There's a lot of redeeming qualities to it. But if you ever uh, stick a shotgun out, it's the easiest thing to grab, too. Yeah. So. I like, uh, I like safes that I, having practiced with, you know, several different to, to see how quickly I can do it in the dark. I like the ones that have the finger pad that, you know, with like four digits mm -hmm. and you can feel where your fingers go and you can feel the buttons. Right. I haven't had as much luck with biometric. Um, I, I find that they work 90% of the time and, uh, you know, in the dark, whatever, I'm in a weird position, whatever, I'm worried about it not sensing my fingerprint. But, you know, I, I think that these, you know, you look at it as a risk reward scenario. That's how I look at it. You know, there's a, there's a risk Let's face it, there's a risk to having a firearm in the house. You have to say there's a risk. I have, I have a nine-year-old, and I have a lot of nieces and nephews, and they're over all the time. And the risk is, heaven forbid, an accident happen. Now, there's a reward to having a gun laying on top of the shelf, you know, hit out of eye, eyesight, but I can grab it immediately, a rounds chambered, and it is ready to go. There's a reward to that. Because I have quick access to a loaded firearm. But there's a risk to that, too. So you have to weigh the risk-reward mm -hmm. for your given situation. So in my, in my situation, I have decided to put every gun in my house in a safe. And I have safes at every entrance to the house, but I have every gun in a safe. The risk-reward for me, that's where I am today. The, you know, it's, it's a debate, you, you, you know, that there's no right answer to every home's different every home environment is different and every scenario is different you could spend all day on it you know you could debate the merits of so many different things um i know guys and i know you do too they keep plate carriers and night vision and rifles by the bed and i'm like okay i mean if that's you know how you want to do it you know good good on you i'm i'm all set with that i'm not gonna take it to that level you know i believe in a good handgun a lot of times you know alan it's <clears throat> it's funny you know thinking about it a lot of times the conversation gravitate gravitates towards the spouse and they're like you know the 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 female or male depending on you know you might have a female uh who's very well versed in firearms and the male's not and they say well what do i do and i'm like well if you're not comfortable with a firearm again it comes back to the pepper spray self-defense melee weapon whatever what have you um but i always say don't leave yourself completely unarmed you know uh you know any woman you know uh you date or male 
if you're a female and this is your area, this is what you feel you need for your own personal security. I always say, don't leave yourself completely unarmed. Don't be afraid to have a, a, a melee weapon, whether it be a knife, whether it be something else, pepper spray that you can defend yourself with. I'm, I'm a huge believer in pepper spray for a number of reasons. And I've been an advocate of it for a long time because I feel it's a perfect in between. And somebody like myself, that's, that's versed in the threat pyramid and understands how to, how to handle threats you it's something you can use that you can even um it's it's almost a this is going to sound bad i'm not a lawyer so everybody this, it's almost a forgivable crime right it's yeah. it's like one of those you know if you pepper sprayed the ups guy because you were in fear it, it, is a jury going to put you under the jail for that yeah you know risk it, reward again, again john yeah, yeah. risk reward and what happens if it gets turned against you Mm -hmm. Well, if my knife gets turned against her, my wife has a knife and she's trying to protect herself and it gets turned against her, that's, that's a very high risk, mm -hmm. risk reward. If her pe can of pepper spray gets turned against her, I mean, you know. I would, you know, I say this to people all the time and I know you understand this. I would never suggest a blade unless that particular person has either been a part of skinning an animal you know, understands what a blade does when it's plunged into something. And I always say, yeah. if you don't know what the weapon will do, like if you've never shot a firearm at the range, but just bought one, and a lot of people out there right now have done that, okay? They haven't been in the range yet because there's just not availability of ammunition to train and everything else, and that's why training's become a hot topic. Uh, I tell people all the time, if you've never trained on it, you're not going to understand what it does, yeah. You know, I've been out on hog hunts. I think you and need some physical strength, too. Yeah, I no, mean, of course. You know, like, I, I, look, I don't, I don't want to be, you know, if, if, a, if a hundred pound girl comes at me with a knife, like, there's not a chance, unless she is like, done tons and tons of training, that that's going to be an effective weapon. It's well, not. The thing to realize in, in a knife fight, this is what I tell everybody, somebody's going to get stabbed. If you, and I've been in barroom scenarios, life scenarios where this has happened. I got, I got stitches to prove it. Uh, you know, if somebody pulls a blade, more often than not, somebody's going to get stabbed in the scenario. Because right away through the, the threat pyramid, the, the situation's escalated. So it's escalated to a point where somebody, it, it, that's an immediate uh, uh, death scenario. Somebody could die. So... When it escalates, you get that fight or flight mentality. Uh, I try to tell people, you know, never pull something. So, so <laughs> it's the age old thing. Somebody pulls a knife, unless you pull a gun, you're probably going to get stabbed. So, you know, I, I've been through enough blade classes to understand, you know, where people die in a blade. You know, you never hear of it being one stick, okay? So they got stabbed once. More often than not, you hear they got stabbed 36 times and you're like, 36 times? Like, that's insane. And then you see these videos and you start to understand it because you don't, even if you're stabbed in an artery, you're not gonna die right away. Unless somebody's a really skilled knife knife uh, a combatant, there's gonna be multiple hits. So, you know, I try to tell people, and this is what was taught to me, if you do get stabbed, you obviously want to try to trap it and, and limit the amount of, of hits you take. And like you said, to that point, it can get turned against you. Now, even if it's a 100-pound woman, if they're just lunging at you, they might hit your arm, they may hit your wrist, they may hit an ocular, which is the worst. Um, in so many ways, they may accidentally hit something. It happens. Or they just take a swipe, which is even more dangerous. So you have to understand blades are sometimes the people have the least training on but can be the most lethal in a home invasion scenario and in any, in any scenario that involves uh, fighting. All, all, so, so coming back to surveillance, all fighting or all self-defense is a management of distance. It's all it is. And we talked for a while even about jujitsu. Jujitsu is the closest of combatives that you could train in. Wrestling is the closest of combatives that you could train in. And if you're on the battlefield and you have to resort to jiu-jitsu or uh, wrestling or, or any of the above, if there's multiple assailants, you're probably fucked. It's probably the last place you want to be is on yeah. the ground. 
and or if there's, there's a, a weapon involved, it's, it's mm-hmm. you don't have a chance. I mean, and, and right. I talked to a buddy of mine who was a Delta for a thousand years, and he said, very well trained guy, superiorly trained. He said, you know, he goes, he's like six four, two hundred and fifty pounds, very well trained dude. He goes, I never want to go to the ground. He goes, jujitsu guys and wrestlers always want to go to the ground. If you go to the ground, you're dead. Something really bad happened. And I don't ever want to be on the ground. And you don't. And that's why, you know, jujitsu is a last resort. Uh, Wrestling is a last resort in any combative situation. It's all a management of distance. If you watch uh, a John Jones fight or you watch certain people, they're great at distance management. And they're great at keeping people away and off their body. And surveillance is the same way. When you put cameras and perimeter stuff, it's buying you time. It's giving you time to make a better decision and to allow your body to go through that adrenaline dump earlier in the fight, so to speak, or earlier in the scenario to start to understand what you're dealing with. And you're going to go through so many, you know, I've had Tony Blauer on the show who gets into the, all these adrenaline dumps and, and all these different mechanisms your body goes through. Your body's going to go through things. And it's really always important to me to have those conversations with people that ask me these questions. And I don't know why, you know, again, coming back, Alan, I'm not an expert in this stuff. I don't know why people ask it to me. You know, I, I, was, I was an executive in the firearms business for years and I don't, I, it's not something, you know, I'm, I'm particularly well versed in. And most of my training has been on the ranges and, and on math. So I'm like, I'm not a home security expert. You know what I mean? I don't know the first. I just know I'm not sweeping the house. I mean, if somebody's in there, I'm calling the cops. You know, I'll defend myself. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure you'd want to make it to my room. But, you know, I, that much I do know. It's kind of <laughs> like it's kind of like the age old saying, do you want to get in a gunfight with a, a professional shooter? Well, you know, Taron Butler's never served a day in the military, but I'm not sure I want to get in a gunfight with him. You know, so <laughs> it's it's one of those things, you know, where. There are guys who have a lot of great equipment. There are the guys who have a lot of great training. But it comes down to where are you a subject matter expert and where does your expertise lie? And you have to know your limitations. Knowing what you're not good at is better than anything else. Uh, I've been out on hunts enough as you have. I've been out enough on ranges that I understand what my body does when you use a firearm. I understand what my body does when you harvest an animal. I understand what my body does when I use different weapons, whether it be a firearm or a blade. So I have, I look at it as I have a little bit further knowledge than most people because I've had all those different adrenaline dumps and it's not like my first time, you know what I mean? So You know, to say that that equates to any of those things, I don't know, but I think it puts me just a little bit further along. You know, have I been in a bar fight or two? Sure. So you understand those different things and you start to respect them a little bit more, right? And when you're explaining home security, I I would guess you do your best to kind of lay those different things out and walk people down that path. And with the coronavirus, everybody is at that heightened, like they're kind of already at DEFCON 3, you know what I mean? So everybody's already at a heightened paranoia. I said this to somebody, and I want to get your thoughts on it because we're rambling on. Somebody said to me, they said, John, you know, um, how do I know when it's bad? And this is what I said. I said, L.A. is always the first to riot. L.A. is the first to fall, right? So I said, you know, wait, wait for it and see what happens in L.A. first. You know, see if, the, if shit gets weird, people start looting. But I said, here's a key indicator. You know, I went to school for economics, so I'm always studying key market indicators. So I said, when you start going in Home Depot and things like sledgehammers and pry bars are missing, you're in trouble. Start to worry. And that's been my key indicator to people that I tell people and they're like, wow, I never thought of that. And they were actually going through their house looking for pry bars and everything else. And I said, I have a bunch and I'm not saying I have them because I want to go in somebody else's house, but if they're going to close down grocery stores or other stuff, I'm going to go get food. And I'm going to say, have a jury convict me, you know, if you're trying to feed yourself or eat. But I tell people all the time, be afraid if you start to go in Home Depot and you go in that pry bar section or that uh, that uh, sledgehammer section and some stuff's missing. Be afraid. You know, the the thing about um, being ready is if you wait for those indicators to happen to start to be ready, it's too late. That's the thing. You know, I mean. I'm a, I'm a believer in food storage and things like that. And I, and I, and I bought my food storage when, when prices were low and there was high availability. I bought my ammo storage when there was a surplus of ammo 
and it, that that's the time to do it now. I mean, it's, too late. it's hard to get toilet paper right yeah. now. I mean, I got two years of toilet paper, but I didn't buy it right now. You, you know, Neil and I, Ready Gunner, were talking about that the other day. Like, you know, because we, we were talking about inventory for FFLs and it got into inventory for homes. You need to always have min maxes, even in your own home. You know, like I said to someone the other day, and I brought this up a couple times on the show, they say, how much ammo do I need? I, I got to get 5,000 rounds. I go, listen, number one, if you don't have the mags loaded and you have to load the mags, you're probably dead. And if we're in a zombie invasion, and let's say you, you, you killed 200 people, 200 zombies, 200 whatevers, widgets, you'd be one of the deadliest people in human history at that point. So I try to like give people context, and they say, well, how much ammo do I need? I go, it's not about ammo. How many loaded mags do you need? If I have three loaded mags by my bed and I have 45, 60, say, call it 50 rounds, I can hang out for a while with someone trying to come through the door. If I have 10 shotgun shells, I can't hang out as long. You know, so I always tell people, you know, more is better. And it gets into the whole argument of the the Glock 17, the 9 versus the 40 and everything else. I'll take the extra rounds because I don't think I'm that good of a shot. And that's what I always tell people. Better to have the rounds because when the bullets start flying, and even if you've been on a hunt anywhere, you don't want to be near the bullets when they start flying in any scenario. And people tend to hunker down wherever they are. So if I have uh, uh, two 30-round stick mags and, and a 17-round, you, you can do a lot with that time frame. I mean, you can keep people at bay. For, you, can, you can wait for the cops to come with that time frame. Um, you know, it's, it's a hard explanation to people to get into that mindset of understanding these things. But when you start to think of it in terms of self-defense as a management of distance, it makes it a lot easier to explain not only security systems, firearms, melee weapons, MMA training, all the in-between. Because I got a lot of MMA guys right now that all of a sudden became gun guys literally overnight. You know, I joked with one of them. I said, if I hear one of you fools use the term, oh, I'm a killer, I'm a killer, again, on the mats, I'm going to have a real fucking problem because all you're running around right now looking for something to keep people far the fuck away from you. And that's the truth. Um, but a true a good observation, observation, super good observation. observation. I'd, I'd never, never thought, thought about, about that, the distance thing, thing before. before. And, and that's, that's all with the... Camera security. That's what you're doing. You're creating more distance. You distance. have the, the most deadly guy in the world with a with a 1911, mm -hmm. and if, if you're on a hill a thousand yards away with a 50 BMG, it's useless. Yeah. Have a chance. Yeah. I mean, so and that's what security does. It creates distance. That's a, a brilliant observation. Seriously, compliments on that. Yeah, it makes it, a lot of sense. All all securities and management of distance. Do you want to give yourself more time to create the best scenario for yourself, or do you want to give yourself less? Um, you know, most people more often than not, they start from the inside out. I don't necessarily think that's the right way. I think what you're doing starting from the outside in okay. is the better way. Give people time, yeah. get them to the phones, let them get the proper help. Why not avoid a problem if you can or be ready, you know, mm -hmm. and going back to that prepared thing, John, do you know how many people call us for security after they've had a break in? It happens oh. all, like, every day. We get calls from people, I had a break and I need a security system. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is like buying toilet paper in the end of March 2020. Yep. It's the wrong time to be doing it. Do it before you have a problem. Be prepared. Now, I want to, you know, ask one more question because we're, we're rambling on. We can go on for hours on this. This goes down rabbit holes. When you're advising people, especially now in the midst of Corona and your field force goes out there, uh, you know, are, are you, um, you know, how does Corona play into this? Is it just the rush on the market? Is it, hey, you know, given the circumstances, now it becomes, a, uh, I guess, I mean, I'm lack of better words, a hygiene thing. Like if you want to know someone's at the door, you know, and talk through the system and use it, are you uh, coaching up your guys on, on all these different things? Because now we have to think about like touching a package after someone else touched it yeah. and, you know, things like that. Is that coming into play for you and you're coaching your guys up and gals up on that? So there's, there's four things, John, that there's four products that I think are, are important right now during this, this problem we're having. Um, the first is, is your perimeter protection because there are people that, are, that get desperate when times are down, and, and having your home protected is important. 
the next thing are cameras. Your, your exterior camera in your backyard and your doorbell camera, knowing who is at your door, that is critical right now in these times. But the other two products are, are going to be a little bit of a surprise to you, and that has to do with our elderly. Um, we have a PERS device, Personal Emergency Response Unit, and it, it's, you know, it's a, a, like an inch and a half long. It's, it's a, a tiny little device. It has an LTE radio in it. It works anywhere in America. And an elderly person can have that. And when they push that button, they talk to a live operator immediately with the push of buttons. It's waterproof. They can run in the shower, whatever. And another product is our wellness cam. And that allows all of our existing customers to put a camera in an elderly relative's home that has a two-way voice connection. So they can see their elderly relative walking around and communicate with the elderly relative at any time through a two-way voice speaker inside the house. So... Those products right now are very big during this particular situation. Yeah, I imagine they would be. Let everybody know where they can find you and how everybody can, can look up your product and, uh, and get in touch with you. Yeah, so, you know, John, I actually, because of the situation we're in right now um, and, and, you know, the, the, the national situation, the economic situation, everything else, so our, our systems, we do a – it's um, – uh, a, a low amount down, like ninety-nine dollars down, and then it's like sixty bucks a month. That's how that's how our thing runs. And for your listeners, I'll just say for the next week, I'm going to give them half half rates. So they would be like ninety-nine bucks down and thirty bucks a month for your listeners. I'm a, yeah, that's amazing. I'll have to put that link down below or where yeah, they can reach so, you. Uh, I'll give you a number real quick: eight zero one eight one seven three nine one eight. You'll have and, to, yeah, text it to me right now. Yeah, yeah. So, and and again, it, there are some credit requirements. Our banks require that. So there is, a, a, you know, when you're getting something really valuable up front and, and then it's over time for the monitoring, because that's what you're paying for the monthly is the monitoring, connection, police, fire, ambulance, all the back end on the camera, servers, everything like that. So that's, that's, that's where all that's covered. But so, yeah, half price for your listeners for the next week. Um, and, and that is going directly through me. I'm the CEO of the company. Perfect. So I've never done a, a deal like this before, and I figured, why not? Let's see what happens. There's a huge demand right now, so let's let's do it. Yeah, and, and to everybody listening, uh, I'll put the link down. I'll put the number down below. You guys can reach out to Alan, and uh, we'll get that we'll get that dialed in. Uh, it's been amazing. You know, I mean, we could go on and on. It's been an hour and ten minutes. We could go on and on about this. It's home security and self defense is something that's uh, obviously. Uh, near and dear to both our hearts, you know, um, mine for different reasons. And, you know, I don't um, necessarily uh, uh, believe in, you know, I want to I want to go down my way. So to, to kind of let everybody know out there, uh, you know, it, this isn't, uh, you know, I think a lot about this. I don't want people to think that, you know, Alan, myself, or anybody out there for that matter, that's either a pro two way guy or because this is a defense podcast that uh, we, we say these things because we want to be like um, Charles Bronson or uh, Bruce Willis and Death Wish. It's, it's not, nothing to do with that. It's, uh, you just want to go your way and you just want to go on your terms. And I don't want, I'm sorry to everybody out there. And I know this will, this will, you know, upset the, the softies out there. I don't like to use the term snowflakes. Uh, I prefer not to be uh, uh, raped, kidnapped and killed in my home. So I think you're doing great work. And I think it's important people understand that they have to understand the extremes, the downside, the extreme downside and the extreme upside. So, you know, to everybody out there, it's not, you know, a, a, a vigilante thing. It's just more, hey, I believe in my own personal protection. I'm not going to rely on calling someone uh, and, and them saving me, you know, I've got to get saved. So, um, you know, that's something that, that's important to me. And uh, the, th- the topic we hadn't touched on was, uh, you know, home security in, it isn't just for your primary home. It can be for your, uh, for your um secondary home if you have a vacation home or anything that you want monitoring on you know that's something you have to consider too um because right now the time is interesting where looting and a lot of those things become you know insanely uh apparent so you know keeping an eye out for that is is critical now now for me you know I want to give you the last word. Uh, everybody knows where to find you. Everybody knows where to track you down. Uh, if they want to purchase or partake in any of the deals, if, uh, anyone has any questions, the best way to reach you, is it that number or is it, you got like a DM? Instagram. Instagram. If you want to contact me directly, Alan Bolin, A-L-L-E-N-B-O-L-E-N on Instagram. I, I answer all my, my DMs. 
So, so beautiful. I get a lot of them. I answer them all. And to everybody out there that thinks, uh, you know, I'm not the expert. I just, you know, people ask me a lot of weird shit. So uh, I in no way position myself as an expert in these things. Alan's the expert on home security. But by all means, you know, feel free to work with whether it's your shooting instructor, your blade instructor, whoever you have out there. Uh, I'm just a paranoid, weird dude, so don't go by me. Uh, I appreciate it, and I want to thank everyone. I want to thank the sponsors. I want to thank everyone, uh, uh, you know, who, who chips in on the show. Uh, you know, especially, uh, you know, this week, I want to thank Vol- Volkortsen and Firearms. Scott Volkortsen was on recently. You know, I uh, anyone knows this, I do the show in, in weekly sponsorship blocks. Scott's been a huge supporter from afar. I, I love Volkortsen and Firearms. I love what Scott's doing. I just love innovators in the industry, and he's been an innovator for a really long time. So go check out Volkortsen and Firearms. Go leave him a, a comment. Scott's one of the good guys. Uh, I appreciate him, and I appreciate everyone out there, and especially Alan for taking the time today. It means means a lot. Thanks, brother. Great, Great talk, talk, John. Thank, Thank you. you. Awesome.